We're agreeing to get started. Let's have a word of prayer, and we will continue from there. Let's pray. Master God, we thank you. We praise you for your love, your kindness, your grace, and mercy. We thank you, dear God, for the privilege and the honor that you afford us to be your people. As we pause in your holy presence, dear God, we pray that you would speak to us, that you would encourage our hearts, that you, you would give us direction for our living. God, we thank you that you love us. We thank you, God, that you have already prepared a way for us. We pray, oh God, that we would discover the plans that you have and that we would be obedient to you and in so doing, bring your name glory and give you honor. Be with us tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, tonight we're going, we're continuing to look at the miracles of Jesus to discover in there his love and compassion for us, his concern for us, and also how we are to respond to that love, how we are to live for his glory and, and to his honor. So um, if you have your Bibles, we're going to get right to it. Let's go to, excuse me, let's go to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. And when you get there, make your way to verse 24. Matthew 17, verse 24. Matthew chapter 17, verse 24. Okay, and it reads, After they arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of the temple tax came to Peter and said, Your teacher pays the double drachma tax, doesn't he? He said yes. When Peter came into the house, Jesus spoke to him first. What do you think, Simon? From whom do earthly kings collect tolls and taxes? From their sons or from foreigners? After he said from foreigners, Jesus said to him, Then the sons are free. But so that we don't offend them, go to the lake and throw out a hook. Take the first fish that comes up, and when you open its mouth, you will find a four drachma coin. Take that and give it to them for me and you. Okay. So let's take a look, look at this. It's a temple tax that's coming and the, the collector of the taxes, of the temple tax, comes to Peter and say, look, does your master, is he, is he going to pay this tax or what? Is he going to, to be a good Jew or what? You see, the temple tax is, is a tax that was off or given by men, Jewish men, 20 years of age and older. It was given so for the upkeep of the temple once a year. It's not the tithe, it's a tax that was uh, imposed upon or asked from the, the Jewish men to say, we need to take care of our temple. Notice they are in Capernaum, the temple in Jerusalem. So they're, they're paying tax to take care of the temple in Jerusalem because of the significance of, of the temple. Also notice that this this tax collector is not like Matthew when they say he's a tax collector. He, he, he's a different kind of, of tax collector. He's a Jewish tax collector collecting the taxes for the Jewish law that Moses set up back in Exodus when the Lord told him, have everybody bring in the, uh, a certain amount, a, a half a drag, dragma or a Jewish shekel, bring it in so that uh, we can take care of the temple, or at that point, the tabernacle. In, in, the, in the New Testament, you see that when it's a Roman tax collector or a Jew collecting Roman tax, they consider him a sinner. They, 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 he's, he's terrible. He's, he, he's doing something crazy because he's supporting, if you will, the works of the enemy, and he's doing the enemy's bidding. But when 
this this tax collector, a Jewish official, comes and collecting for the temple, he's not he's not seen as someone who is an enemy of God. In fact, he's doing God's work. It is it is it is estimated that Jews paid uh, back then, Old Testament, and, and during that day, paid approximately twenty five percent of their income in taxes to the Jewish establishment. Not to mention what the Romans took for being part of the Rome, being part of the Roman government. So when we say tithes ten percent, we're like, whoa! whoa. But here they, they, they're paying an upwards twenty five percent, and this is being required of them. Not even including this is not the tax that that um, Peter is being asked about here in Capernaum. It's possible that Peter is being approached or feel at added pressure because um, he's from Capernaum. Now, he, he might move to Capernaum later in age. It's the part of the Bible says he's from Bethsaida. That's what said that was his home. But it also says that when Jesus and them were there, he, Jesus, after he finished preaching in the synagogue, went to the home of Simon Peter and his brother Andrew in Capernaum. So, so he had a home, a place in Capernaum, which turned out to be Jesus' headquarters. So Peter just may have felt a little added pressure because he might have known this guy who collected taxes because they paid taxes their entire lives. Well, from 20 up, you paid taxes. So the chances are he knew this dude. So when the guy came to ask him, it was not that the tax collector was that unfamiliar with who Peter was. So he went, he went to Peter. And paying your temple tax is something that, that good Jews did. You're supposed to, you know, you're supposed to do that because it took care of the temple. Now, if we look at this thing, we'll do, we, we can start kind of teasing out of it, if you will, what Jesus, how Jesus handles that whole situation, and 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 how he deals with Peter, the tax collector, the issue of tax, and and who he is, and by by doing that. It may suggest to us not only how we handle resources that we have, but more importantly, how we view Jesus and who Jesus is and, and the balance of our lives. So, as we, we continue to look at Matthew 17, verse 24, it says, After they arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of the temple tax came to Peter and said, Your teacher pays the double drachma tax, doesn't he? Jesus' critics then and today was, was more tempted to come to his disciples mm -hmm. to criticize him. Mm -hmm. they did, he, the, Jesus was there. Mm -hmm. Jesus was the rabbi. Mm -hmm. He was the leader. The, the tax collector could have went to Jesus and said, Jesus, you pay the tax, don't you? Mm -hmm. But he didn't. He went to his disciple to, to criticize and dismantle Jesus' credibility. And that's how the enemy does things in our lives. Mm -hmm. We are his, the disciples of Christ. So he, he know where Jesus is. <laughs> the devil know where he's at. The, de the devil knows who, who, who Jesus is and where he sits, where his throne abides. But what does he do? He comes and he attacks us. And he started asking us questions like, is Jesus really going to take care of you? Is Jesus really on the other? Can you really trust him? Can you, can you, the same kind of stuff he asked Adam and Eve back in the beginning. Try, can, can you really do it his way and it be okay? Can you really follow his, his lead and it, and it works out for you? See, because what the enemy and, and this tax collector does is they have a different central focus. In Judaism, the tabernacle was the center of their religious experience. Yes. The tabernacle was the place where, where everything happened. It was the tabernacle where they came and, 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 and ministered to God and worshiped God and saw God. The tabernacle was the, was the most important place because they didn't, they didn't think that God necessarily dwelt with men outside of the tabernacle. So it was in the tabernacle. I had, I had to go see God because somehow God, who was everywhere, only made his presence known in the tabernacle. So they, they would, the tabernacle was that center, that center place, that central place where they, they, they um, understood God to be. And it was the, 
It was the, the anchor of who they were as a people. It was the identity of who they were. It, it, was, it was like sometimes people make their car their, their identity. They, they put their, invest their identity in their, in their education or in, the, in their job. Or, or even sometimes, especially you see it down south, the church building is more important than the worship that happens in the place. Mm -hmm. So it becomes the, the, the symbol of my identity, the symbol of, of who I am. And that's what happened, or what was going on with the tabernacle. That the tabernacle was a symbol, their identity. It was the calling card of the Jewish nation, of the Hebrew people. Mm -hmm. The center of it all. So it made sense that any good Jew, any God-honoring Jew, would pay the temple tax. So you want to take care of that which is your identity. You, 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 when you have a bad, a bad hair day, you do something to fix your hair because your hair somehow represent Come your on. overall appearance. Come on here. You know, you, you, you do something. You, if stuff ain't, ain't, ain't right, you fix it. If somebody tell you that, you know, you, I don't know if you know or not, but you got your shirt on backwards. You, 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 you may slip into the restroom and turn it around right. because. A, a, a wearing your shirt inside out may say suggest to others that there's something going on with you. <laughs> so you really want to take you, we take care of those things that we tend to identify as that which identify us. Right. So if, if if it's identifying us, we take care of it. So it makes sense that Jews, good God honoring faithful Jews, would want to take care of the temple because the temple is where they hung their identity. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the man coming to tell me to Peter saying, "Don't your, don't your master take pay tax?" is is not unheard of. It is not totally crazy, but it is the the enemy's way of challenging disciples, taking the negative thoughts and comments and coming at those who follow, yeah. rather than going at Jesus Himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, it's the critic, oftentimes hold his. Um, how can I say this? Hold Jesus accountable for, for this, a standard that's established by their own circumstances and situation. Okay. He was a tax collector. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he collected the, the temple tax for Jews. He didn't ask, don't your master keep the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He didn't ask, don't your, don't your master take care of his, of his family. He didn't, mm -hmm. he didn't ask, don't your master wash his hands before he eat? He, mm -hmm. he asked, don't he pay the tax? Because right. the tax is what he was concerned about. Right. Mm -hmm. The tax is what he had, uh, 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 his, he was committed to. Right. And most of the time, people who criticize God criticize him on the basis of their own situation and circumstance. Mm -hmm. When I'm sick, I criticize him because he ain't a healer. Right. If, if I'm broke, I criticize him because he won't meet my needs. Mm -hmm. if, if, my, if I'm in bad relationships, I criticize him because he don't let people care about me. Mm -hmm. You see, if, if we, we take our situation, our circumstance, and elevate that to a standard that we expect Jesus to answer. Mm -hmm. So we don't follow him. We set a standard and ask him to follow us. Yeah. Don't your master pay the tax. Jesus. Holding him um, wrongly holding him accountable to a, an arbitrary standard that he established. Right. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus didn't pay you the tax, mm -hmm. one, it doesn't suggest he don't pay tax. Okay. Well, well. Because you don't know what Jesus is going to do. <laughs> Gives no the, you have, don't give you the right to suggest he doesn't do what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we get caught by that trap. Because we don't see what he does, we think he don't. He healed everybody on our block, but didn't heal us, and we question if he's a healer. Uh, well. if he, he, he meets the needs of everybody around us, but we still got bills due, and we question if he's a provider. Mm -hmm. You see, because if he doesn't do it for me, then he ain't really doing it. Mm -hmm. And what does that arrogance say? Mm -hmm. That I'm in charge, and you haven't done nothing, Jesus, till you do what I need done. Mm -hmm. So we got to come to the place where we stop establishing ourselves and setting ourselves up as the standard mm -hmm. and allow God to be who God is and God to do what God does. So is this, this these views that, that we have as these standards that we see that the, the the critic of Jesus is setting up. Now the challenge that the um the 
That's all great. It reminds me to turn mine down. The challenge that uh, that we see that Jesus has as the as the critic comes against uh, comes at Peter. That challenge that he he attacks Peter with it it is at, it's levied at Jesus. Okay, don't your master pay the tax? But what it really is, or, 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 or I should say, it is also a passive, indirect questioning of Peter's holiness and faithfulness. Mm. You see, because if you're following this man, Jesus, who don't pay his taxes, he ain't a good Jew. What does that say about you? Mm. If Peter, if you're following this, this, this Jesus who, who, who got his whole uh, uh, responsibility and obligation as as one a child or a son of Israel, he got it all confused. What does that say about you? Mm -hmm. So the the attack on Jesus is a backhanded attack on on Peter. So now Peter, you got to answer, you got to answer uh, for Jesus in a way that preserves you. Mm -hmm. wow. You with me? Yes. You I now. If, if I allow someone to 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 uh, hold me accountable mm -hmm. to their misunderstanding of what Jesus is doing, I now got to try to defend Jesus in a way that liberates me. Ooh. So so when they ask you if 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 your master pays taxes or how can you follow a God that let babies die or how can you. Trust a God that allow wars to break out. How can you follow a loving God that let people die of disease? Well, see now you just set a you just set a standard based on your situation, your circumstances, your world worldview. You set a standard a standard for God and judged Him warning, and now you have called me into question because I trust Him. Mm. What you fail to do is realize that your standard is in error. Mm. Your question is messed up. Your, 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 your presumptions about Christ are wrong. You, your, your foundation is, 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 is cracked and crumbling. Mm -hmm. So your question really has no value. Uh, the question might be, how, what kind of loving God let you live when you talk so bad about him? Uh, the, 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 the question may be, what kind, what kind of all-powerful God provide for you when you give him nothing? Ooh. See, you, you can ask that question another way. So we, 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 have, we have these misguided uh, notions and we hold, we hold them up and say, this is what God can and can't do or who God is and is not based upon the, 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 my, my understanding of my details of my life. Mm. And, and the truth is, none of us are fully in touch with ourselves. Uh, none of us fully understand the details of our lives. Well, Where's the last time you followed a blood cell through your whole body? Right. You, you, well, how many how many beats have your heart had today? Mm. We we don't really know what's going well, on inside of us, but what we do know is that we have a God who knows, mm. and we leave that to Him. So why not leave everything to who God is? But but the the, the collector, the, the tax collector, he came to, to Peter attacking Jesus and Peter with this backhanded questioning of Peter's faithfulness. Um, and, and right to be or understand himself as a person of God. Mm -hmm. And that's what the enemy does. See, when the enemy comes and he starts attacking your Jesus, he ain't trying, to, he ain't trying to, to, to defeat Jesus. He's trying to dismantle your respect of Jesus. Mm -hmm. he's, try, he's trying to cripple your faith in Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's trying to negate your, your ability to obey Christ. That's what he's doing. You see, because he can't whoop Jesus, but he might be able to break your allegiance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He can't, he, can't, he can't make a, a, an all-powerful God weak, but he might be able to weaken, weaken your faith enough so you don't follow a God who is able. And if you quit in the midst of the, of the river, you're going to drown. Mm -hmm. the, the children of Israel had to pass through the Red Sea. They couldn't build a camp in the middle of the Red Sea. If they decided to stop when, at the point where they didn't understand God, they never would have left Egypt. If they decided to stop at the point that they did not understand God, they would never have left Egypt. We cannot stop at the point where we realize, I don't understand, I don't know what God's doing. No, he didn't know what he was doing when he started. He didn't know what he's doing when he created you. What we need to do is follow him through the stuff and let and let and see what he's doing in our lives, okay? 
So the challenge, the challenge of Jesus was this passive questioning of Peter's faithfulness. Mm-hmm. When, when, when the enemy comes and he challenges you mm-hmm. up on the basis of your following Jesus for whatever reason, mm-hmm. you follow Jesus, don't, he don't pay tax, do he? <laughs> <laughs> you following Jesus. He don't love everybody, does he? Mm-hmm. You following Jesus. How, how, what did he say about, about rich? What, you following Jesus. And what happened? What happened? Your life was so messed up. You got so much pain in your life. And you still trust who? Mm-hmm. See, what that really is, is, is attacking you to try to make you, try to make me weak in our faith, our trust, our commitment to Christ. And when he can do that, he can wrestle us away and put a wedge between us and our God. And we think, I'm just no, I'm just being real. No. Mm. You're not being real. You're being duped. You're being played. Because the enemy is pulling you back far Mm. enough to make you think that you're standing without the need of God. If you listen to the the new atheist, the modern atheist atheist movement, what what you will always hear is they, they will say, they can't prove that there is no God. What they do is they, they come to a position in their logic or illogical thinking, their, their misguided information, they come to a conclusion that I don't need God to explain it. Mm-hmm. And because they say I don't need God to explain it, then they make the leap to say there is no God. Mm-hmm. Well, well, that leap is called faith is the, on the other end of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. See, when you come to the place that I can't prove it, but I believe it, that's faith. And so what they do is they come to the place where they can't prove that there is no God, but then because I can explain it without God, I make the faith leap to say there is no God. Mm-hmm. Well, why, why should your faith have legs and mine done? Mm-hmm. Why, why should you be able to stand strong and say there is no God on faith, but when I say there is a God by faith, you call me crazy, out of touch. Mm-hmm. There's right. something right. wrong with that. Right. And what's wrong is that you're just coming trying to break down and destroy mm-hmm. a connection that we have with God, and you want to call that something other than faith, and that is really not. It's just misguided faith in your in, in self, the God of self. That's all that really is. It's a God. It's, it's, it's idolatry, the worship of self. Therefore, I don't need God, and so I replace God with me. That's that. That's is it, 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 that's not new. It goes all the way back to the beginning. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's right. But see, they 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 they've become very unscientific to prove that science is scientific. There's something wrong with that. Uh, in some places, that's called circular logic. But okay, verse twenty-five. He said, Peter. He said, Peter said, yes. When Peter came into the house, Jesus spoke to him first. What do you think, Simon? From who do earthly kings collect tolls or taxes? From their sons or from foreigners? So when it says he said yes, it said Peter said yes to the tax collector. The tax collector said, does your master pay the two denarii tax, temple tax? And Peter said, yes. Well, Peter said yes without really knowing. <laughs> but he had to rescue himself. <laughs> Yes, he does. So that makes I'm good. Now we both good. But then when he went in the house with this question looming over him, before he could ask Jesus anything, same thing. Jesus said, Peter, Simon, what do you think? Does, does a king charge tax and tolls of his own children or just foreigners? Of, 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 of the, those who live in the house or those who have to come to the house? And, and, and Simon said, he didn't. He didn't. Well, we'll get to his answer. We ain't, we ain't got that yet. So who, who does he get from? So, so this guy, Peter, comes in, and he says yes. Why do you say yes, Peter? Why, why do you feel, why do I, Kofi right? why do you feel the need so many times to, to, to cru- hold a position about Christ that protects my reputation in the world? Mm. Why do I feel like I got to hold a position about Christ and let other people think well of me so they don't criticize me in the world. Mm. Why, am I, why, do I, why do I allow their opinion of me to flavor and, yeah. and shade and color the position I hold of Christ? Mm. You see, I, 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 don't, I don't come out just and, and say what I want to say. If Peter was on, he would say, I don't know, go ask him. Right. But, but he, 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 yeah, he's in the house, go ask him, you know. 
uh, when I'm calling, Jesus, come here. I mean, he, he could have done that. But rather than, than suggest that you might be right, that there's something weak about me. You're right. There may, I, I might be misguided. Instead of, instead of dealing with that, the, the, the fact that we don't know, whatever it is, we shade color, flavor, our, our representation of Christ or our response in a way that kind of protects us from the, the ridicule, the, mm. the, the, the opinions of the world around us. Mm. We, we don't let everybody see our Christian flavor. We don't, mm. we don't let everybody hear our Christian language. We, have, mm. we speak, we, we're bilingual, we have world and we have church. <laughs> That's the truth. You know, we, we talk a certain way in church and we talk a certain way in the world because we know different people we won't, you know, we use different words. And sometimes there's a crossover and we have to excuse ourselves. But there's you know, there's this we use different we use different yeah. words because we're we're in this thing different. So Peter said, Yes, Peter, why are you protecting yourself? Because maybe tradition taught Peter that a good you act this way. Mm. Well maybe, maybe tradition taught us that 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 you blood, you stick with blood no matter what. Mm. Maybe the tradition has has taught us that that you you don't you don't you don't you you help or you give or or whatever it is. Mm. Maybe tradition has helped shape the way that we do things, the way we were up we were brought up, the way that we have uh, our past experiences. Tra the tradition in our lives has taught us that that you might not want to, might not want to be. Forthcoming. You see, if I've lost a couple of, of things important to me, jobs, people, uh, situation, friendships, because I took a, a strong stance for Christ, the next time it looked like I might lose something, I may not take such a strong stance because tradition has taught me when I stand, something happens. Okay. You see, and, and so maybe Peter said, um, because I know this guy, because tradition has taught me that good Jews pay tax. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good Jews pay tax, and because good Jews pay tax, I'm gonna I'm gonna err on the side of we're good Jews. Right. So I don't know. I haven't paid taxes this year, mm -hmm. but maybe we he does. And so what is he? What does he say? He says yes, and I think he says yes because he says so out of who he his tradition, where he comes from. He didn't say yes because he thought of Jesus. Mm. He didn't say yes because he contemplated what Jesus would do. He didn't, he didn't say yes because he had talked to, to the Lord and, and understood the Lord's understanding. He didn't say yes because he had gotten that, that direction from Christ. He said yes because yes was comfortable. Mm -hmm. He said yes because yes, yes was the expected answer. He said yes because yes was the easiest answer. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if we're honest, a lot of our lives, that's what we do. We give the answer that is comfortable and easy. Mm -hmm. And that's not always bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, who, who, wants to be, who wants to be in pain? Who wants to be in trouble? Who wants to be lonely? Who wants to be hurt? Mm -hmm. who, nobody wants that. So we have to weigh. Do I give the comfortable answer and kind of find out later? Or do I stand up and, and be honest and, and true about what's going on with this situation? Mm -hmm. um, you hold that question because you, you might answer it in a minute. <laughs> Peter's um, response to the critic was and his own preconceived notions mm -hmm. off established the parameters for his Jesus encounter. Okay. So, what, so what I'm saying is this. Our response to the critic when the enemy attack us when we're going through, we find ourselves being challenged. Our response to the Jesus critic and our preconceived notions, the, the traditions that we bring with us, the mindset that we come with us, often if we hear this text, will determine our conversation with Christ. It, is, it will set the stage, the parameters for our Jesus encounter. <laughs> when Peter walked in the room, Jesus did not ask him about his lunch. <laughs> Didn't ask him, you know, or, or, what can I do for you? How, how's your mother doing? And where's, where's Andrew? He didn't ask him those things. When he came in, he got a pop quiz. <laughs> when he came in, 
he got he, he he got challenged again over the same thing that he had just been challenged about in the street. Wow. When we have with our responses to the critics in our lives about our relationship with Christ, I ain't talking about haters, I'm talking about those who attack Jesus, those who come at your faith. See, we, we want to say, well, you have haters. No, 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 no. The enemy ain't your hater. The enemy's trying to negate you because he's a hater of God. Mm -hmm. So when we, when we have these critics that's happening in our lives and we have our own preconceived uh, notions, then we have to wonder what it is that we are up against and what we're confronted with. What we're up against, what we're, what we're confronted with that we have to handle and know that somehow, some way, that, that God has it working out for us. So we have to, our, our encounters of, of what we go through, um, the dialogues of your, the dialogue of your prayer life, mm -hmm. what you bump up against on your job, mm -hmm. how your family interacts. What I'm saying to you, some of that stuff is prescriptive mm -hmm. by how I respond mm -hmm. to the critics of, my, of the oh. Jesus in my life. Mm -hmm. Jesus is asking me if if, if, if somebody come and, and ask me to, uh, I'm making this up as I go, come and ask me to um, do something that is, is against God's will. Mm -hmm. And and I know that I shouldn't, but I do. Mm -hmm. Jesus may send another opportunity for me to get it right. Mm -hmm. Somebody else may come. The person may come a second time. Why? Not because I'm falling further down. Mm -hmm. But it is Jesus saying, what do you think, Cliff? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, is, it is opportunity for me to, to consider, reconsider, address, and change what I have let slip before. Mm -hmm. okay. It is not a trial to push me further down. It's a rope to pull me out. Come on, he doesn't throw me a shovel. He throws me a ladder. <laughs> so I, I can get out of the ditch I just dug for myself because of what I thought and what I allowed other people to, to challenge me with, to how I responded to that challenge, left me in a situation. So when Peter walks in, God asked him, Pretty much the same question. Mm. He says, well, "Peter, what do you think? How, how should how should how should uh, a, a king handle?" So Jesus' question changed the dynamics of Peter's learned experience. His question made Peter um, reconsider how he had learned and dealt with his life thus far. Mm. See that's. That's what we miss when we don't when we don't uh, encounter Jesus. When we don't study His Word. When we don't read. When we say, oh, "It's just church." I, I, I get my praise on by myself. When, wow. when we when we take ourselves out of that flow, mm -hmm. what we miss is the Lord challenging us with a ladder pulling us up. Yes. We can stay where we are or yes. slip further, a little bit further down. We might even put some scratches on the wall trying to dig ourselves out. Right. But what we won't get is what God is really doing to get to, to elevate us beyond and, and out of where we were. Yes. And that's what we see here. We, when we come to church and Bible study, if, you, if I go into the God's word just to validate what I already believe is true, Come on, Pastor. Mm -hmm. everything I hear I already knew. Mm -hmm. I, I, I knew that. Yeah, that that makes sense. You know, I'm just coming to validate my my situation. Then what do I? What am I doing? I'm not allowing God to challenge the dynam the dynamics of my understanding, which means I won't grow. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, which means I'll stay. Mm -hmm. right. When Peter came in. Jesus challenged the dynamics of his of his preconceived notions, his mm -hmm. understanding. He came in. He says, "Tell me, Simon, the king, does he collect taxes from his children or from foreigners?" <laughs> it's now now people say, "Well, how do you answer that question?" You know, I, I can't I can't help I can't help a drug dealer. I ain't never been no drug dealer. I've never been an alcoholic. You know, I well. Peter ain't never been the king. Mm -hmm. 
God has a way of, of, of shaping questions that you can answer without having the experience. Thank you, Jesus. That, that we can know how, how it happens and what's going on without having to go and touch the fire. You, you can know that it's high. You, you can see the smoke and figure out that you don't want to pick it up. Right. So when, when he says, P Peter, tell me, what, what do you, how do you see this thing? What do you think is going on? This, this, this question, he changed his dynamic. How did Jesus change, how does Jesus question change the dynamic of Peter's understanding? By changing the focal point, the anchor point. The, um, you can see where, I forget what it's called. I, I call it the anchor point. It's a, it's, a, it's a technical word that where something is tethered, where where the center point is, you can control how far something goes. That's just logical. You know, if you have a, a, a rope that is five feet long, and you put that rope here, um, you can you can go five feet. You can get you can go over here between these two tables. But if I take that same rope and put it back there, you can't reach here because mm -hmm. where it is anchored determines how far you can go from that thing, right? Mm -hmm. So remember that Judaism was anchored in the temple. Mm -hmm. So the temple, everything evolved around the temple. Mm -hmm. Jesus' question changes the focal point from the temple to God and, his, and Jesus' relationship with the Father. So now the temple is replaced in Peter's thinking by God the Father and Jesus' relationship. Because he didn't ask about the temple, he asked about the king. Mm -hmm. The king now becomes the focal point of the text. Mm -hmm. The king becomes the place of it. They didn't collect the, the priest's tax. They didn't collect the high priest tax. They collected the temple tax. Because the temple was the that thing that they considered center. Mm -hmm. Well, now the center is no longer the temple. Jesus' question changes for Peter the focal point, which changes the dynamics of Peter's understanding of what's required. Mm -hmm. You with me? Are you following me? Mm -hmm. If your happiness is the focal point, you're only going to... Everything evolved around that is going to be uh, associated with your happiness. Either that which takes happiness away or that which brings happiness. That which you need to be happy, that which you can't have if you're going to be happy. If your focal point is your family, now everything around that is your family. Is what, 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 go, what do I need to take care of my family? What do I need to, to keep away from my family? How do I need to break, raise my family up? If, if, if your focal point is your job, then everything around that, I don't care how, how wide your scope is, you can, you can live a very narrow life or you can live a very broad life. The focal point is still everything around it is going to, go, go to rotate and evolve around my job, what I need to do to keep my job, I gotta get educated, I gotta get recertified, I gotta make sure I'm a, I got I gotta take care of my boss, I gotta be there on time. I can't be like I gotta get this overtime. I gotta be whatever is going to be your job. Yes. Mm -hmm. So with with them, the focal point was the temple. So everything around that had to do with the temple. Right. Mm -hmm. But when life when God changes Peter's focus, and now it is God and Jesus in relationship with his father. That's the focal point. Now everything for Peter focuses around who God is, what God is doing. The in and out flow has to do with God. That's why Jesus Christ must be the center of your yes, life. Yes, because yes. when he's the center of your life, everything evolves around yes, him. Yes, but yes, if, his, if, if, if the center of your life is getting blessed by God, then yes. everything's going to go around the blessing. He's going to be on the margins of your life. Mm -hmm. If, if having, a, having enough money, having enough peace, taking care, whatever it is other than Christ, it becomes that which anchors your life and everything focuses and evolves around it. Yes. So when we make Christ the center, the anchor, the focus of our lives, 
Now everything focuses around. The world will tell you no, but remember the world don't believe Jesus is real. Mm -hmm. The world will tell you no, you can't make Jesus the focal point. It gotta be your family, it gotta be your job, it gotta be your kids, it has to be your health. It gotta be and, and, and a while ago it was it was invoked to say, you gotta take care of you. Mm -hmm. You have to be the focus of your life. If you ain't happy, ain't nobody gonna be happy. Mm -hmm. If you don't love yourself, you can't love nobody else. If you don't take care of yourself, ain't nobody gonna take care of you. You gotta look out yourself for yourself. Okay, nobody gonna look out for you. It was in bold yeah. to say the focal point has to be you. Yes. Well. And that was easy and simple and comfortable because no matter what you did, you agreed with you. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, cool. I agree with me. I can do this. Okay, me, I, I agree. We agree. I agree with myself. It probably ain't the best thing for me, but we figured out how we can make it work, right? Me? Yes, we did. So I can do it. And, and, and so everything around evolved around, and, and you can't do that. You have to make it where it is Christ. And then studying your word don't become a challenge. It becomes insightful. It becomes it becomes illuminating. It you you can see stuff that you couldn't see before. You understand your world differently now. But when, when your thing is, I got to go to church to get my ticket punched, church becomes boring. Mm -hmm. wow. It becomes a burden. But when you go because it's Christ, he's the yes. center, and I got to know him. Mm -hmm. Now when you go, you're not, you're not looking at the funny people who talk too long. Mm -hmm. you're, you're looking, you're hearing words that are encouraging, that are insightful, yes. that's moving you forward. Why? Because Christ is the center. And, mm -hmm. and, and so what temple do you, what temple do I need to have moved out of the way. Mm -hmm. what's, con what's in my life is competing with Christ mm -hmm. as the center, as the anchor, as that, way, that's, that place is stable? Is it, is it kids? Is it, is it finances? Is it, you know, my health? What is it that, that's competing with him to, to be the, my purpose for being, my, my reason for living, that everything else is evolving around? doesn't say that you, Jesus didn't go tear down the temple. <laughs> it, don't, it don't mean that you got to destroy it. You just got to move it off center. <laughs> Christ has to become the center point. So, no, you ain't got to get rid of your family. <laughs> your family just can't be center. <laughs> you, know, you, ain't, you ain't got to leave your job. Your job just can't be center. Christ needs to be the center of all of all that. Okay, so Jesus' question moved. Jesus' question moved Peter from where he was, and 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 and, and, and helped him to to move the temple out of the way. Because verse twenty six says, mm -hmm. after he said from foreigners, Jesus said to him, "Then the sons are free." <laughs> you see, mm -hmm. Peter knew the right answer. He just had to be refocused. Mm -hmm. Most of us know the right answer. We just many times have to be refocused. Mm -hmm. Most of us know that you ain't got no business cussing folk out. <laughs> Most of us know that we really should forgive people. Mm -hmm. yes. Most of us know that God is in charge and, mm -hmm. and we really should let him handle it. Most of us know mm -hmm. that, that, he's, that God is a way maker. If we trust him long enough, he'll come through. Yeah. Most of us know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but keeping other stuff off God's throne is a chore. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. because there's other stuff. Mm -hmm. Finances and fear and doubt all want to jump up on the throne. Yeah. Yeah. Self and, and pride and envy want to jump up on the throne. Mm -hmm. Unforgiveness and, and hatred and bitterness want to get on the throne. Yeah. We feel cheated if we can't hit them back. Mm -hmm. We we we, 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 feel, we feel like we've been yes. misused if we can't give them a piece of our mind because of what they did or said. We feel, but no, what do you mean? We feel somehow uh, angry at God and God want us to bless somebody we know cursed us. Well, well. And we're like, God, no, I, I can't do that for them. Because we, we, we feel that way. But, but what are we really saying, you know? We have to come to this place where we let God be God and he brings us this place and he helps us because here he says again foreigners have to pay mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. He knew he knew the answer. He knew the answer. And then Jesus finished his thought. Then sons or children are free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, if only foreigners have to pay, mm -hmm. then the children are free. Children of the king mm -hmm. have full access mm -hmm. and benefits of the king's house based on their relationship. Foreigners don't have the relationship of children. Right. Mm -hmm. See, if you're a child of God, well. there's a relationship and a right that we have mm -hmm. that the unsaved don't have. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, well, children don't have to pay, only foreigners, which means that there is, there is, it is relationship-based. So when people want to say, well, he's all, you know, he's in, we're all brothers and we're all sisters, no. <laughs> we're, we're all human right. but, but, but we are of two different households well. either you're in the household of God all right. or you're in the other down the block across the street on the other side of the tracks you're over there somewhere you're in a different household there, there, there's not multiple homes that you can pick from. There's not multiple listings. Either you're with God or you are not. And so when we look at this thing, Jesus says that, that no, to the children, the sons, they're, they're free. So I have the benefit of the temple without uh, payment because I'm a son. And that, that don't mean that my benefits are free. Mm -hmm. It just means I don't have to pay. Right. Mm -hmm. Some the daddy paid, the king paid. The king is mm -hmm. has the authority to 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 waive what other folk have to pay and my for, for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so you God, Christ paid for us. Okay. So Amen. so we get to go into the house. We don't have to pay, but we do have to act like children. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. See, mm -hmm. we gotta be children, gotta act like children. His children, his his sons, his daughters. So so, ah. all children know that talking with respect and trying to be nice is the best way to get something out your parents. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You don't run up to your mama, your daddy. And start fussing them out, call them out their name, and tell them what they're going to do, and expect them to give you something. Well, That's why kids can be just just, just, just messed up and, and fussing and sitting with attitude over there, and then discover that, that something's about to go down that they won't be a part of, and they get nice. Just <laughs> because they know that the best way to get something out of mom and daddy is to, to, to be nice and talk with respect to mama and daddy. Jesus. That's the best way. You see, because even though you're, you're a son, your daughter in the house, you got to act like right. a child who respects. So, so that, that, that's what we have here. Children don't, don't pay because on the basis of the relationship. Right. Now, mom and daddy ain't, 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 ain't crazy. They know you only act at night because you want something. Right. Right, 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 right. You think you're slick and you get no, but you're really not. They know. But because they love you and it's theirs to give, they give it to you for your effort. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus blesses us. God blesses us Ooh. even though sometimes he know we only coming for the salvation. We only coming for the blessing. We, yeah. we ain't coming because we want to serve you. We come because you got the money I need to pay my rent. You see, Lord, I'm praying. I ain't praying the long time. I'm praying now because I'm in trouble. And so I'm making nice. I've been I've been had an attitude holding, but I'm making nice now because my car is about to run out of gas and I need to get but so so we make it nice. Don't let me run out of gas. Don't 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 let them put me out. Let, don't let them turn out the electricity. God, God, I'm, we make it nice. And, but and, and sometimes he, he blesses us because we make nice. The effort to make nice. But he, he knows that we're just doing it because we want to bless him. We ain't really going there to follow him. But 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 we, we act like we act like children. But look at look at check out the benefits of the temple. See, because you got, you, you, you switched you switched centers. 
the ben- but the benefits that was in the temple are now evident in Christ. Now you look into the new center for those benefits. Okay. Mm-hmm. You see, most of us, whatever is the center in our lives, is there because we think we need it to be there. We need the money, we need the joy, we need the peace, we need whatever it is, we need we need it there. Because if it wasn't, if it, if that center wasn't there, if that wasn't that most important thing wasn't there, we think our lives are gonna spin out of control. We'll have a we'll have an issue. The benefits of the temple is what? The acceptance and fellowship with God. The temple is a place where you come and you and you're accepted by and you have fellowship with God. You make your offering, you come and you worship, you celebrate. But now Jesus is saying it's the Father and it's in your relationship with me. Mm-hmm. So where do we find acceptance and fellowship with God? It's now with Christ. It's not in in the temple. It's it's not it's not there. Um, it's the forgiveness of righteousness. Excuse me, forgiveness and righteousness through God's atoning grace was it was there. I I'm, I'm jacked up and I come Lord to be made whole to be made righteous. Where does that happen? I just have to come to the temple and let the priest. Uh, uh, anoint me and I, I make my sacrifice and I walk away and with my, my sins forgiven. Now we find that in relationship or through relationship with Christ. Yeah. It's, it's because the center has focused, uh, has changed. And, and the, the, the temple used to be the place, the seat of authority, the seat of social and civil authority and order. It's the place where laws were made and uh, 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 pro- social procedures and, and support was made. It was a place where they their, their system of taking care of the poor and all that. All that stuff happened in in the temple. Now where does it happen? It should be happening through the church, through the body of Christ, through, through thus uh, we come to Christ and we find that. Now, does that mean that the temple no longer has significance? No. We know that because Jesus still paid the tax. Mm-hmm. You see, the, the, the temple still needs to be taken care of. The, 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 what is, that still needs to happen. But it cannot become the focal point of, or, or the situation that dictates everything. So pe- people will, will hear what I just said and say, see, that's, you ain't got to go to church. That's not saying you ain't got to go to church. In fact, it's saying the direct opposite, that we need to obey God and come to church. Why? Because that whole process is a part of who God is, the anchor, because Christ told us to, so we have to obey him, be obedient, and do what he told us to do. That's why the the church is important, Uh, our our relationship with brothers and sisters in the church. It it is, it is, it is, what's that fancy word? Befuddle. It befuddles me. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Be fun. Okay. <laughs> it confuses me <laughs> to um, when I I talk to Christians and I I I, 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 I interact with, with folk Christians <laughs> who get along with worldly folk better than Christians. Okay. Well, Christians who got have more relationship and better relationship with the unsaved world than they do inside inside the household of God. Uh-oh. Now, the Bible says, how can two walk together except they agree? Mm. Except they agree. Mm. Well. So if you got more relationship, friendships, <laughs> partnerships with the unsaved world than you do inside the house of God, mm. who's changing who? Okay. Well. Who, who's looking more like who? Are they looking more like you, saint of God? Or are you looking more like them? Right. See, because... If, if I find myself more at ease in a world where Christ is marginalized, mm-hmm. what does that say about who I am and my relationship with God? Come on. Mm-hmm. So we have to ask ourselves those things. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get how that happens because the benefit of the temple is with the people of God. We are the body of Christ, the mm-hmm. temple of God. You 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 be you would be in serious pain and, and, and a little bit excited if all of a sudden your pinky jumped over ten feet from your body. <laughs> you would think, what in the world? Well, see, if you're God's pinky and the body's over here and you jumped over out there in the world, what what are you doing over there, pinky? Come on back. Because with that, we're supposed to be a body. And well, I just can't get along. You can't get along because you don't stay long enough to find out mm-hmm. where you fit in the body. You've been, you've been in the world your entire life. You've only been saying, how long? You've been running around with folk and ain't, ain't caring nothing about God for all your life. But you've been, how long have you really been trying to fit in? 
Did, <laughs> do you know why? This this is this is a little aside. You know why a lot of folk get caught in adulterous adultery adulterous situations and mm -hmm. and 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 think because they think it's exciting mm -hmm. because they give it more attention than they do their own relationship mm -hmm. and and there are no obligations there's no real level of commitment mm -hmm. it is it is it is all just sneaking around the excitement the adrenaline of it and and there's no obligation any relationship without obligation is no relationship. Mm. Any relationship without commitment is not a relationship. It's not even worth having. Mm. It is an affair. It's not a relationship. Mm. Relationship, every relationship has obligations and commitments to it. And if it don't have it, it is an affair. It is not in a relationship. It's not a true relationship. Mm. It is just not. And so, but but that's what happens. So when we are we we're married in this body, we're with Christ. We're we're, we're the bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. We're married. The Bible calls us giving ourselves into the affairs of the world, calls it adultery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? It's because mm -hmm. it's exciting. There's no real relationship. There's no commitment. We can mm -hmm. flow in and out of the bar like we want to. Mm -hmm. We can flow in and out. We can, we can, there's no real commitment. Nobody's judging us for the sin in our lives. In fact, mm -hmm. they live in sinful with us. Mm -hmm. And so we feel comfortable over there because nobody's telling us it's wrong. Nobody, and when, when, we, when we say it's wrong, they say, oh, it's okay, everybody got to see it. They make us feel okay about our failures. And, but over here in the church, people, those who really love you will say, that's messed up, I still love you, we can do it, but you, know, you really shouldn't even live like that. <laughs> see, the people who really love you will tell you truth, even though truth might make your teeth grit. <laughs> but people who don't care nothing about you, people who really love you, people just want to use you, Take what you got, yeah. they'll tell you what you need to hear. Yeah. And so, we got to come to this place where our social order, our civil order, illuminates and, 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 and emanates from the church. Stop making the club and the, the, the practices and, and the, 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 the gyms and the, the schools, stop making that your social outlet. Mm -hmm. Stop making that the, the hub of, 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 of who you are. Mm -hmm. It is the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's where we find wholeness. That's mm -hmm. where we come together. Mm -hmm. And that's what God has done. And he, that's the temple. And he's relocated that in Christ. Okay? So this obligation to God is based upon relationship. Mm -hmm. Though foreigners are obligated to pay. Mm -hmm. Children are obligated to abide in the Father's house. Okay? But notice what Jesus didn't do. Jesus did not condemn the critic, the tax collector, or the tax. He didn't say that that man shouldn't be asking you that. They shouldn't ask you. They shouldn't collect those taxes no more. How dare he? I was right in the house. Why didn't he come talk to me? He didn't, he didn't condemn the, the, the collector of the temple tax. Nor did he say that tax is unfair, it's too much. Who got to, who got to pay all that? Jesus, he, instead of condemning, going after those who challenged his legitimacy, yeah. Jesus grew Peter through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes we want Jesus to knock down the enemy. Come on. Yeah. And Jesus is using the enemy to grow us up. Yeah. 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 We want no. just, 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 just make him leave me alone. I don't want to hear no more. Jesus, make him shut up. Get him out my ear. That's what we say. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. Just let me reframe his question. Mm -hmm. See, because what, what, what he does for us, what Jesus does, is he, he helps us. He, he didn't condemn. He, he, he expands Peter's understanding of God. Yes. Whenever we get to the place where we think we know enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We satisfied with the amount of God we have right now. Mm -hmm. We have stopped growing mm -hmm. and have become spiritually impotent. Come on, mm -hmm. There should always be a frustration. Mm -hmm. There should always be. What is that? God, what are you saying? What do you mean? 
There should always be a tug and a pull. If you if you live in a place where your God questions are answered, <laughs> that's right, baby. It's a uh oh. You're in the wrong. We have to come to this place, all right? Because look, both both Jesus, both Jesus and the critic challenged Peter. The critic says, "Do your master don't he pay taxes?" Mm-hmm. Jesus says, well, "What do you think, son? Who should pay taxes?" Mm-hmm. They both challenge him, mm-hmm. but the difference is their concern for Peter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The critic challenged Peter, trying to destroy Peter's loyalty, faithfulness, and acceptance of Jesus, thus robbing him of his relationship with Christ. Yeah. Well. <clears throat> Jesus challenged Peter trying to, to reposition him and to grow him through the process of, of the whole experience where that critic no longer has power. Mm-hmm. See, Jesus brought Peter to a place where the critic no longer had authority. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, but sometimes when we close our, our, our ear to, to Christ, when we choose to, I can't do that, I can't, Jesus, that's too much. Mm-hmm. By telling Jesus, no, we empower the enemy. We do the exact opposite of what we intend to do. So, so when we say to him, no, Jesus, we disagree with Jesus, we go against what Jesus' will is for us, we empower the enemy in our lives. We give the critic additional strength. We, we turn up the volume on the critic's voice. So, so, so we, Peter was being pulled to a deeper spiritual connection and understanding. Last verse. 27. But so, Jesus talking now, but so we don't offend them, go to the lake and throw out a hook. Take the first fish that comes up, and when you open its mouth, you will find a four drachma coin. Take that and give it to them for me and you. Yeah. All right. This just, just, just some stuff that jumped out at me while I looked at that. And, and y'all can see it. The first thing that jumped out at me is, Jesus was willing to pay what he didn't know. Mm-hmm. And I said, wait a minute. But he, he, he did that on a larger scale, didn't he? Mm-hmm. He paid what he didn't know. Right. Mm-hmm. And he's doing that here. He, he don't owe the tax. Right. His question informs us, implies that he don't owe the tax. Right. But he mm-hmm. still pays the tax. He don't owe the sin payment, but he still pays for sin. Right. He doesn't, he, doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't owe anything, but he still yeah, pays Lord, on, for Lord, us. Lord, he pays right. on our behalf. Yeah. So Jesus pays what he didn't owe. Right. Jesus' concern was for those who criticized him. Mm. He said, so that we don't offend them. Offend. How many of us are worried about offending folk who criticize, talk bad about us, put us down? <laughs> how, how many of us are like, well, you know, I... I I, I got a lot of stuff that I, I, I just don't want to offend them. Uh-huh. I'm willing to give up my right so I don't offend you. Uh-huh. And I know that you just try to put a knife in my back. Uh-huh. You, you see what Jesus, Jesus says? Uh, Jesus. We, don't, we don't want to offend them. I don't uh-huh. own the tax. I know he was talking bad about me in the street. <laughs> but, but so I don't offend them, uh-huh. we're going to do Man, and, 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 but I, I know what y'all saying. Yeah, but that's Jesus. But he calls us to be like him. He calls us to be like him. To do what he does. So, so we, we're called. He calls us to be like him. But Jesus not only pays for himself. But for Peter, who was not challenged by the critic, the critic didn't say, don't you pay, Peter. He said, that's your master. Don't your master pay. Mm-hmm. So when Jesus pays, he pays not only for himself, mm-hmm. but he pays for the one who hasn't been challenged yet. Mm-hmm. He pays for those who are associated with him. Mm-hmm. See, he pays, he pays a debt that, that Peter has not yet been um, challenged to pay, or maybe or he probably knew, was aware of it, but he, he had not been yet uh, criticized. Mm-hmm. So he pays. 
So sometimes, you know, we get, we, we get, we do stuff, and Jesus paid for it, and it never hit the light of day, and mm -hmm. we ought to say thank you rather than, I got away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Instead, instead of, I got away, we might say thank you, because, because if, if he hadn't have paid before the challenge came, we might have failed the challenge. Hallelujah. But Jesus paid the debt before mm -hmm. the challenge was even made, because he paid for himself, and he paid for, for Peter. Now, Peter went fishing. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, go fishing. Mm -hmm. um, he, don't use your net. Just throw out the mm hook. -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And whatever you catch, the first thing, the first thing you catch, yeah, look in the mouth and get the money. Now, Jesus determined, just from this text, y'all going to see it when I tell you. Jesus determined to pay what he didn't have readily available. He didn't go in the money bag and say, go get it, because mm -hmm. didn't, Jesus didn't have all that. He didn't, people want to make it like he would have a lot. Of, he, he didn't. Uh, so he said, go fishing. He didn't take it from the money bag. And mm -hmm. you, go, you go do that. But what does that say? He worked miracles. Yeah, he did. But it also says that Jesus had to commit to to doing something or paying, paying it before the resources were available. Mm -hmm. Commitment precedes resource. Mm -hmm. We go the other way. Come on, Pastor. We got to have it before we commit to doing something. Mm -hmm. I can't go, I ain't got it. I can't, I can't have it, you know. <laughs> if we follow Christ, commitment precedes resources. I, I, I don't know how I'm going to make the church. I got to work every Sunday. Well, commitment precedes resources. Mm -hmm. If you stop saying, I can't go to church, you start saying, I got to go. I'm getting to church. I'm going to do it. And now your commitment will resource down. Now, the world try to hang us up on that. They call it visualization and name and claim. It. Bump all that. It is about us committing to Christ and following. Just because the world takes spiritual truths and rename them don't mean they came up with them. So... So what we we have to see is that Christ is saying that your commitment precedes resources. You you don't, you don't get what you need standing here. Mm -hmm. You don't get you don't get. That's why I said every day you get what's needed for that day. I don't necessarily have today what I'm gonna need tomorrow. Take I tell you what, take ten breaths right now that you're gonna need tomorrow. You can't do it. It, it, it happens when we when we follow. So so we Jesus. Does it? He 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 he, he sends Peter's fishing, and and the commitment follows the resources. Jesus made Peter's word good, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. only mm -hmm. but only through Peter's participation and faithful obedience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, because Peter had to trust Jesus enough to go fishing mm -hmm. that he was going to catch something. Now, it had to sound as crazy to him mm -hmm. as it does to us mm -hmm. if we didn't read the, how, it end, how the whole story ended. Right. So, Peter, you go fishing in order to get money to pay the taxes. Peter had to go and do what Jesus said uh, in order to, to make his word good. If we want to come out of bad situations... Mm -hmm unscathed or, or at least whole and healthy, if we want to come out of embarrassing times without our names being thrown everywhere, if we want to get out of, stop trying to scheme and start being obedient. Come on, Pastor. Stop, stop, trying, stop trying to figure it out and how can you get by, who can you get over on, and start being obedient. Stop trying to figure out who you can buy money, borrow money from and pay your tithes. Okay. If you can just, if we can... If we can do it, who can I get the movie here to help me with my rent? You can pay your tithes! But <laughs> Stop trying to scheme and get over and start being obedient. And when we do that, then, then God can, can help us. So he made Peter's word good, but Peter had to participate in the process. And then Peter had to do what we have to do, and sometimes it's hard for us to do. And that is, he had to do the right thing with the resources once he got it. Mm -hmm. Give it to people. <laughs> Jesus says, go get it. Now remember, Peter had not been asked for his taxes yet. Right. 
He had enough money in his hand for four sheep. <laughs> Go pay your taxes and mine. Right. Jesus didn't follow him to the man. Mm -hmm. The taxes, by the time you get back to me, Peter, the taxes ought to be paid. Come on. He had to do with the resources what Jesus instructed him to do, what the plan was. Mm. So many times, we're going to do all the right things with stuff before we get it. Mm. <laughs> before we get it, I'm, 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 I'm going to help somebody. I'm going to pay my tithes. You know, I'm going to bless this person over here. God, Lord, you give me this job. Then I, I can do this over here. And I'm going to do this right there. And I'm going to help these people. God, if this little bit of money change come in. Then I'm going to do this over here. But God, if you give my help back, you give me on my feet. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to witness for you. He gives us and do for us. Provide for us. And then we act like we forget mm. what the relationship, what the requirement is. Peter had to take the money and go mm. and pay. Now, he's crazy. There's something in this preacher. He had to take. Peter had to take Greek money in a Roman world and pay a Jewish tax. Okay. Okay. He, the miracle he took Greek money mm -hmm. in a Roman world and paid the Jewish tax mm -hmm. and Jesus mm -hmm. told him to do it mm -hmm. Jesus could have said the fish is going to have a Jewish shackle mm -hmm. or shekel mm -hmm. it's going to have a Jewish shekel he could have put well why he did he could have put a Roman denarii mm -hmm. but he put a Greek drachma mm -hmm. Something in there. Something in there. Something, I'm telling you something. Y'all better be able to do it too. All right, that, that's all. That's all. That was just for the preachers. They had a little something, a little something there to dig out. <laughs> all right, questions, concerns, thoughts. All right, come on, let's pray.